Hey ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Red Adolescence and welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope that you're doing well and I hope this video finds you well. In today's episode, we're gonna be covering my top 10 favorite fragrances for the summer of 2020 and this is gonna be my niche list, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin the video, I just want to mention that if you are a fan of fragrance related content, whether it be reviews, top 10 lists, giveaways, whatever, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. This way, whenever I do upload future fragrance related content, it'll get delivered straight to your feed. Now, I know another thing is that I considered making this video a while back, maybe even prior to the beginning of June, because I know a lot of people, when you're in the market for a summertime fragrance, you want something that is bright, aromatic, citrusy, perhaps you don't have something like that in your collection, so you turn to these YouTube videos for assistance. And a lot of times I feel like if I do it too early on in the season, this might not end up being as accurate of a list as opposed to me doing it smack dab in the middle of the season where I actually have a better idea of which fragrances I'm actually wearing as opposed to just throwing some together that I think would work well in that season. And then for one reason or another, I end up neglecting some of them. So I personally find this to be a more accurate list for that reason alone. Some of these fragrances you've also seen me review in the past. And I also wanna mention that there is gonna be a giveaway attached to this video for a official mini of Towers Tallow Blue that I purchased. And if you wanna win this, along with a five ml decant of any three other fragrances in this list, all you have to do is leave one comment down below. Of course, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. And then I'm gonna select the winning comment in one week's time. I'm gonna pin the winner's comment to the top the common thread so make sure to come back here in exactly one week to see if you've won so let's go ahead and get it started um, I just have one honorable mention and one of the spots in this list is going to be tied between two fragrances I'll go ahead and mention what that is when we get to it but my honorable mention of course I'm mentioning this right at the beginning of the video for con conflict of interest reasons this is by a brand of which I am the creative director and this is Navitus Navus. Now this is a fragrance that was composed by Christian Carbonell in 2019. After pitching several mods to us, I ended up uh, selecting this one. This is such an amazing citrus driven orange, lemon, grapefruit, bergamot, just a citrus cocktail in the opening. And it dries down to this very smooth and clean vetiver note coupled with cedar, but it's really more clean vetiver than anything else. Such a spectacular and amazing fragrance for the summertime. And again, yeah, I'm biased because I actually selected this fragrance and this is for a brand that I represent. I am the creative director for this brand. I'm gonna leave a link down below if you wanna get it for a really, really good price. I absolutely love this one and it's novice, by Navitas Parfum. So let's get on to the official list. I have obviously 11 fragrances in this list because of what I mentioned earlier. And the number 10 spot goes to a fragrance by the company Veronica Bay. And this one is called Cap d'Antibes. And this is at times resinous, at times it's floral, at times it's citrusy, and they're very vague with the note breakdown. One thing that I do know, they use a high percentage of naturals. This is something that is said by Veronica Bay, who is the brand owner, who has had, I think, upwards of 25 years of experience in the industry. And all of the ingredients are harvested in or around Grasse, France. And they also work with a lot of different organizations to help wildlife and ocean marine life, so on and so forth. And this is a stunning fragrance. I think if I had to describe it in a very simple way, I would say it reminds me a little bit of a fresher version of Rose 31 by Le Labo, except without the spices. This is a wonderful, wonderful fragrance. If you have a chance to try it, uh, I think Veronica Bay's Cap d'Antibes is one of the best from the company. Definitely don't miss out on the opportunity to check this one out. The next one in this list is one that I've actually covered on my channel twice for whatever reason. I think I know the reason. I just really love this fragrance that much. And it's by the company Atelier de Sor and it's called Riviera Drive. Now this was the Riviera collection. There are a total of three fragrances in this collection. And this is the one that has this note of absinthe, which I find very, very unique. Now I have personally encountered wormwood, artemisia, absinthe, and a lot of different fragrances. And what I would say, this one stands out in the sense that it has this rosemary note. So this, the, there's this aromatic component in the opening, but there's also a good deal of citrus to sort of back everything up. It's a wonderful fragrance. It's 
one that's a little bit on the aromatic side, like I said, and so if you're looking for a pure citrus fragrance, I would probably suggest not necessarily going with this one. Again, if you're looking for like a rose-based fragrance or one that has um, rem remnants or is reminiscent of rose, I would definitely recommend checking out Cup d'Antibes. But if you want something that has a bit of that uh, tangy edge to it, I would recommend checking this one out. Also with that aromatic appeal in here as well. The next one on this list is one that I know has been a fan favorite for a long time, but it also happens to be one of the more underrated fragrances by this company and it's by Creed and it's Erolfa. Now, this is when Erwin, Olivia, and Fabian uh, from the Creed family went on a sailing trip and they were inspired by, you know, the Redolin properties that we're picking up in the air. This has melon in it, it has citrus, it has ambergris, it has a lot of these typical Creed ingredients in here. And when you smell it, it smells like a really natural smelling Creed fragrance. However, I think this one isn't as salty as Millicent Imperial. And I love Millicent Imperial. You guys know that I have initially reviewed it back in 2012, eight years ago, and I've been featuring it in lists ever since. So I absolutely love Millicent Imperial. But there's just something about this fragrance where it's a little bit smoother. It's not as rough around the edges. It's also not as salty while also having that ambergris note that I think Creed is pretty famous for. So Erolfa by Creed is another fantastic fragrance to check out if you haven't already done so. The next fragrance on this list is one that I have been wearing for many, many months now. And I have to say, without a doubt, the best time to wear this one is in the summer. This one by Amorud is called Whetstone. Now, this one is a very salty fragrance. And I think initially when I covered it on my channel, I said this is the more versatile and the easier to wear version of Selmaron by Healy. Selmaron by Healy at times, if we can just be honest, smells fishy. And I don't think everybody wants to go out there and smell like kelp or seaweed or blue-green algae or anything like that. But I know with this fragrance in particular, um, it doesn't smell like marine phytoplankton. It actually smells like salt. And I think the salt com combined with the mineral notes, but then those smooth woodsy notes in the base just create a very versatile, very easy to wear fragrance. I absolutely love this one. I've loved this one for many, many months now. And I just wanna disclose, I know a lot of people have received this product for review on their respective YouTube channels. That is awesome. But um, I wasn't one of them. I actually did acquire this through my own means. So just for clarification, in case anybody thinks this product was sent to me by the company or anything like that, it wasn't. So that's Whetstone by Amarud. The next fragrance in this list, I also acquired through my own means. I purchased this fragrance, what was it, a month and a half ago, two months ago, pretty much right when I found out it came out because I am a huge fan of this company. And yes, there is a mini that is available for the giveaway. And so make sure to participate in the giveaway by leaving a comment down below. But this fragrance by Tower Perfumes is called Phthalo Blue. Apparently Phthalo Blue is a color, so Andy Tower, the perfumer is also a painter, and that is a very popular color. And so I'm sure he uses that in his paintings. But this is his first, if I'm not mistaken, his first attempt at an aquatic slash oceanic fragrance. And even when you take a look at the advertisements for this fragrance, it looks like you're deep under the water and you're staring at the surface of the water you can see the ripples in the waves. And this is a fantastic fragrance. It actually features this unconventional note of dill or fennel, if I'm not mistaken, one of those two. And it almost has this licorice vibe. I believe it's fennel now that I'm thinking about it. And there was only one other fragrance that uses that, but in a very designer way. It's called Tour de France. This one, on the other hand, is quite strong. It's pungent. You have this oceanic thing going on there. I'm not really sure what he used in it to give it that appeal. I I would be more than interested in doing a full review of this one if you would like me to, but it opens up with this slight licorice vibe in the opening, something akin to the smell of aniseed or star anise, but it's such an awesome fragrance, really puts you in the mindset of being in the ocean. And uh, I think these two fragrances kind of do the same thing, and I think that that's what's the most impressive thing here, but they do it in two totally different yet artistic ways, and so I love both of them. Oh, another thing that I wanna mention is if, um you like Tom Ford's Oud Mineral, chances are you're gonna like this one just as much or if not better. I feel like Tom Ford's Oud Mineral is a fragrance that I don't like as much just because I find this one to be a bit more wearable. And with Oud Mineral, I find that it's a little bit too seaweedy, if that makes sense. 
The next fragrance in this list is Oud Tonic by The Gate Paris. This is part of the Caravan collection and I actually wore this fragrance all throughout a trip that I took to Malaga, Spain last August. I can't believe it's been almost a year. I did an event at Niche Perfume, so yes, this bottle was actually provided to me by the company, but that doesn't change the fact that I love it to death. I have been wearing it so much. It's such an incredible fragrance. And you know what? I'm actually gonna take it a step further and I'm gonna say this is probably the hardest to get fragrance on this entire list. For some reason, people who don't live in Europe or the Middle East are having a hard time getting their hands on a bottle of this, but it's a fantastic fragrance. It's gin and tonic with this very wearable oud note. That's all that needs to be said. Definitely check this one out. And the next one on this list is a fragrance called Oh, I'm sorry, it's called Greenlee. So we had a bit of a name change here. So this is Greenlee by Parfum de Marly. And there are two fragrances from, Par well, three. Three fragrances from Parfum de Marly that I now love to wear in the summertime. Galloway, Sedley, and this one. Is Pegasus versatile enough for the summer? Yes, I think it is. Are there other offerings from the company that I think can be worn in the summer? Castle or maybe Darley? Yes, of course. But Greenly is honestly my favorite for the summer now because it just has this very bright sort of coconutty fig opening. I know neither one of those ingredients are actually in here, but that's what it reminds me of. It kind of reminds me of Musk Imperial by Atelier Cologne. Also reminds me a little bit of the Orchid Man by Frappan. And both of those perfumes, if I'm not mistaken, have the same perfumer, who is Jerome Epinet. So if you haven't had a chance to try Greenly yet, I think you can um, put your name down in an email list or something. I know it's available for pre-order, so I'm gonna leave the email down below if you are interested in purchasing it. It should be available in a couple of weeks, so that's the good news. But this is such a fantastic, bright, fresh, fruity, really juicy fragrance with a dry down that has this musk ambergris thing, kind of similar to Percival by Parfum de Marly. But this one is awesome. I really, really love Greenly. The next fragrance on this list is a flanker done right, in my opinion. And I actually have a couple of the flankers that this company has come out with. And this one is actually under the Zerzhov Universe umbrella, but this is Casa Morati. And this is from the Italian brand of Zerzhov, obviously. And this one is called Mephisto Gentiluomo. Now, I actually did a review on this such a long time ago, and I always wanted to pick up a bottle of it, and I ended up acquiring one recently from a gentleman in the Facebook groups who was selling it for a really, really, really good price, so thank you for the deal. And this is such an amazing fragrance. I actually don't like the original Mephisto because it does smell quite similar to Silver Mountain Water, and so I would say for that reason, it's a bit unoriginal, but this one, on the other hand, is fantastic. You have the violet, you have the grapefruit, you have a little bit of like this iris thing, adding this non-lipsticky smoothness to the fragrance. It's just really, really well done. If you haven't tried it, I think, hey, there's a reason why it's in my top five. It's an amazing scent, and it's definitely one of the ones that I have been wearing the most this summer. There's never a bad time to wear Mephisto Gentil Bomo. The next fragrance on this list is probably the most natural citrus fragrance in this entire list. So just to recap, rose, aromatic, fruity ambergris, salty, licorice uh, oud and gin and tonic, really fruity with that burst of fig coconut thing going on in there. And then you have this smooth iris with grapefruit. The next one is all about mandarin orange. And funny enough, when you go on Fragrantica, people are saying that that's not even what they get as the strongest note in here. I definitely do. A lot of people say they get more yuzu than anything. I know it's yuzu, pink pepper, vetiver. Uh, but this one is 20 Iconic Masculine by Clive Christian. Such an amazing, amazing fragrance that I picked up last year and I have been wearing pretty much an entire year because I picked it up towards late summer 2019 and I have been waiting for this one for such a long time so that I could finally wear it in the appropriate season and it's so amazing. The most natural citrus that you're gonna smell in a fragrance or I should be more specific. The most natural orange that you're gonna smell in a, in a fragrance, aside from Bigorat Concentré by Edition de Parfum Frederick Moll. So definitely make sure to try this one. One of my favorites, 20 Iconic Masculine by Clive Christian. Also super expensive, so I do apologize. And then I see you can look at the fragrances that I have here in front of me and I actually have a tie for the number one spot because I have nine in front of me here. And these two fragrances are tied for my number one spot. I tried. 
I tried. I really tried thinking of which of these fragrances would I prefer to wear more of. And what I found myself doing is that I'll wear one of these fragrances one day, the other the other day, back to the first the third day, back to the second the fourth day, and then I end up wearing one of these but I really find myself wearing these two fragrances so incredibly often and I'm just gonna reveal them one at a time. So coming in the Tide number one spot, the first fragrance I'll be revealing is by Royal Crown and it's called Celebration. This is such an amazing, amazing, incredible fragrance. If you're looking for an incredibly natural citrus fragrance rivaling, yes, 20 Iconic Masculine by Clive Christian, but also with this note of mint and these really natural, smooth, clean florals, the jasmine, the geranium that's used in here. I actually had the opportunity to chat with Antonio Visconti recently, and I was very privileged to do that because there's so much history to this brand. And this is celebration because they're celebrating the heritage and the culture of Italy. And he told me that all of the ingredients are picked with joy. For this fragrance. They are looking for the most natural, the most ripened ingredients that they can find. And when they do distill the essence from these ingredients, they make sure that when they pick them, they pick them in the middle of the night, long after the sun has set. And there's a very specific method to how they do things. And he says that that actually does alter the smell of the raw material when, depending on when it's picked, what time of the day it's picked. And this is just such a fantastic, fantastic fragrance. It has the bejeweled cap with the Italian flag in it. Absolutely, this is actually my scent of the day today. It's such an absolutely amazing fragrance. If you haven't tried Celebration by Royal Crown, get a sample, win this giveaway. I'm not sure what else to tell you. You have to try this fragrance, it's so good. And coming in the other number one spot, I couldn't make up my mind, I'm sorry guys. Coming in the other number one spot is 100% one of my favorite fragrances. It is a newer acquisition of mine. And I do have to thank my friend, Dave Atlas, whom I recently collaborated with. And he actually uh, sent me a 5ML decant. I wore those entire 5ML's and I said, I need to get myself a bottle of this. And I'm so happy because I fear that this fragrance is not available on the website, but it's so good. This one by Roja Parfum is called Oceania. Again, thank you so much, Dave, for that 5ML decant. Thank you for putting me onto this fragrance. It's so incredible. I don't think I would have sampled this fragrance otherwise, to be honest with you. This is such an amazing, again, whole lot of citrus, lemon, bergamot, orange, grapefruit, lime. There's so much going on in the opening, but you also have the jasmine, two varieties of jasmine, if I'm not mistaken. You have the ylang ylang, you have these other floral components, you have this lavender, this musk that's going on in there. You also have this aromatic presence of thyme. From all of the fragrances in this list, honestly, this is one of the more complex fragrances. This is one of the most natural fragrances in this entire list and I absolutely love it to death. Honestly, it feels like you're sitting in the middle of a garden that is just overflowing with these beautiful flowers in the middle of summer. You're drinking the sparkling cocktail. There's a citrus grove beneath you. It's such an incredible fragrance. Please do yourself the favor and try this fragrance. I 100% think it's worth a blind buy. Um, again, I never recommend blind buys, but if you are looking for two fragrances that you must, must, must sample this summer, or even fragrances to pick up now for the following summer, or even if you're wearing them in an office setting, you can wear it indoors as long as it's in a climate controlled environment. Celebration by Royal Crown, Oceania by Roja Parfum are two incredible fragrances. Please make sure to get your nose on both of them if you haven't already, as well as if any of my descriptions of these other fragrances really spoke to you, make sure to check those out as well. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. This was my top 10, or all right, let's say top 11 favorite uh, niche fragrances for the summer of 2020. If you own or have tried any of these fragrances, please let me know what you think. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Also, once again, if you wanna be entered in the giveaway to win uh, an official mini of tallow blue, as well as a 5ml decant of any other three fragrances from this collection, make sure to leave a comment down below. Let me know which of these are you the most looking forward to trying or which one of these is your favorite. Maybe it's a fragrance you've already tried. Again, I'm gonna select the winner in one week's time and I'm gonna pin the winning comment to the top of the comment thread. So definitely make sure to come back here in a week to see if you've won. Thank you again so much. I hope this video found you well. I love you guys. 
and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye.